that the body and blood of Christ and the Holy Scriptures are most necessary to a faithful soul. The voice of the disciple, O most sweet Lord Jesus, how great is the blessedness of the devout soul that feedeth with thee in thy banquet, where there is set before it no other food than thyself, its only beloved, more to be desired than all the desires of the heart. And to me it would verily be sweet to pour forth my tears in thy presence from the very bottom of my heart, and with the pious Magdalene to water thy feet with my tears. But where is this devotion? Where the abundant flowing of holy tears? Surely in thy presence, and in the presence of the holy angels, my whole heart ought to burn and to weep for joy. For I have thee in the sacrament verily present, although hidden under other form. 2. For in thine own divine brightness mine eyes could not endure to behold thee, neither could the whole world stand before the splendour of the glory of thy majesty. In this, therefore, thou hast consideration unto my weakness, that thou hidest thyself under the sacrament. I verily possess and adore him whom the angels adore in heaven. I yet for a while by faith, but they by sight and without avail. It is good for me to be content with the light of true faith, and to walk therein until the day of eternal brightness dawn, and the shadows of figures flee away. But when that which is perfect is come, the using of sacraments shall cease, because the blessed in heavenly glory have no need of sacramental remedy, for they rejoice unceasingly in the presence of God, beholding his glory face to face, and being changed from glory to glory of the infinite God, they taste the word of God made flesh, as he was in the beginning, and remaineth for everlasting. 3. When I think on these wondrous things, even spiritual comfort whatsoever it be, becometh sore weariness to me. For so long as I see not openly my Lord in his own glory, I count for nothing all which I behold and hear in the world. Thou, O God, art my witness that nothing is able to comfort me, no creature is able to give me rest, save Thou, O my God, whom I desire to contemplate everlastingly. But this is not possible so long as I remain in this mortal state. Therefore ought I to set myself unto great patience, and submit myself unto thee in every desire. For even thy saints, O Lord, who now rejoice with thee in the kingdom of heaven, waited for the coming of thy glory whilst they lived here, in faith and great glory. What they believed, that believe I. What they hoped, I hope. Whither they have attained to, Thither through thy grace hope I to come. I will walk meanwhile in faith, strengthened by the examples of the saints. I will have also holy books for comfort and for a mirror of life, and above them all thy most holy body and blood shall be for me a special remedy and refuge. 4. For two things do I feel to be exceedingly necessary to me in this life, without which this miserable life would be intolerable to me. Being detained in the prison of this body, I confess that I need two things, even food and light. Thou hast therefore given to me, who am so weak, thy sacred body and blood for the refreshing of my soul and body, and hast set thy word for a lantern to my feet. Without these two I could not properly live, for the word of God is the light of my soul, and thy sacrament the bread of life. These may also be called the two tables, placed on this side and on that in the treasury of thy holy church. One table is that of the sacred altar, bearing the holy bread that is the precious body and blood of Christ. 
the other is the table of the divine law containing holy doctrine teaching the true faith and leading steadfastly onwards even to that which is within the veil where the holy of holies is five thanks be unto thee o lord jesus light of light everlasting for that table of holy doctrine which thou hast furnished unto us by thy servants the prophets and apostles and other teachers thanks be to thee o creator and redeemer of men who to make known thy love to the whole world hast prepared a great supper in which thou hast set forth for good not the typical lamb but thine own most holy body and blood making all thy faithful ones joyful with this holy banquet and giving them to drink the cup of salvation wherein are all the delights of paradise and the holy angels do feed with us and with yet happier sweetness six oh how great and honourable is the office of the priests to whom it is given to consecrate the sacrament of the lord of majesty with holy words to bless it with the lips to hold it in their hands to receive it with their own mouth and to administer it to others oh how clean ought those hands to be how pure the mouth how holy the body how unspotted the heart of the priest to whom so often the author of purity entereth in from the mouth of the priest ought naught to proceed but what is holy what is honest and profitable because he so often receiveth the sacrament of christ seven his eyes ought to be single and pure seeing they are wont to look upon the body of christ the hands should be pure and lifted towards heaven which are wont to hold within them the creator of heaven and earth to priests is it specially said in the law be ye holy for i the lord your god am holy eight assist us with thy grace o almighty god that we who have taken upon us the priestly office may be able to converse worthily and devoutly with thee in all purity and good conscience and if we are not able to have our conversation in such innocency of life as we ought yet grant unto us worthily to lament the sins which we have committed and in the spirit of humility and full purpose of a good will to serve thee more earnestly for the future